here we are on Knox Common. It's now a local nature reserve uh, managed by Bridgend Council. Very popular with walkers, particularly dog walkers. Uh, at one time it was a typical piece of common with grazing rights. Local people grazing their sheep and cattle here. But the grazing has long since ceased. Like many commons, Lox Common is on poor soil, very thin sandy soil, overlying limestone, not much good for agriculture. All the best parts of common land were taken over in the 18th and 19th century by landowners under the enclosures and all that's left are the pieces that are not much good for anything else. Hence we've got places like Lox Common. The, um, Poor soil, no nu low nutrients is actually why this area is so rich in particularly plant life because the poor soils do not allow uh, any vigorous grasses and other plants to dominate everything else. In amongst the rocks at the top of the shore you get plants that can withstand some salt spray. This is rock samphire not the same as the marsh samphire which you get in restaurants but it is edible <coughs> and it used to be pickled a lot in the past and used as an accompaniment to meats and so on. At one time it was so popular in the 19th century that um, it became quite scarce in some places but now very few people pick it. Um, I'm all for foraging where you're just collecting it for your own use but commercial foraging where people collect plants like this for um, restaurants I think is another matter and um, can cause big problems. Um, other plants up here which like the salt, this is sea beet which is um, the ancestor of all our beet plants which includes beetroot, spinach, sugar beet uh, very common in coastal regions and then you've got sea thrift sorry thrift or sea pink uh, very abundant along the coast here makes quite a show this is torment hill a little plant usually found on mountains and moorland uh, it does grow here on more acid patches of soil where the uh, the soil is slightly raised like on um, and hills. Uh, the name Tormentil is thought to come from torment or pain and it was apparently used to cure toothache so it eased the torment of toothache. The roots produce a red dye which was much used in the past. Up here on the higher part of the common we find examples of what's called limestone pavement where the flat limestone has been eroded, creating deep gullies between blocks of limestone. And quite often you'll find in the crevices examples of plants that would normally be found in woodlands, such as dog's mercury. We're on another bit of limestone pavement, just overlooking Rath Bay. There's a stone chat, it's just flown off. You should be able to just see Skur House in the distance along the coast. In amongst the rocks here you've got another plant, very common, Herb Robert. Um, herb because it was used in herbal remedies. Robert, they think, goes back to an old English word meaning red, so it's red herb. And over here in the crevices we've got something else and I don't know everything, this I'm not sure, I think it's a fairly uncommon plant called meadow rue but I'll have to take a piece back to identify. This is salad burnet, another plant that likes these conditions, fairly dry shallow soils overlying limestone. Um, the leaves, as the name indicates, can be used in salads. This is mousy hawkweed, an attractive member of the dandelion family with its pale yellow flowers and the leaves that look a bit like a mouse's ear, hence the, the name. Lots of buttercups up here. These are mostly what they call bulbous buttercups because uh, there's a bulb that forms underground and that's what where they grow from in the spring. Uh, did you know that the parabolic shape of the 
buttercup flower reflects the sun's rays like a parabolic mirror so that the, the anthers and the stamens in the middle are heated to a warmer temperature than the surrounding air so they, they produce seed more quickly. The land on the, sea, the landward side of the road on Locks Common is also part of the common but it's rather different. It's been cut for hay for many years and grazed more intensively than other areas, although not in recent years. Nowadays it's cut, I think, twice a year, once in the early spring and later on in late summer. And as a result, it's becoming a bit like a hay meadow with a huge range of flowers uh, that you would normally find in a traditional hay meadow. We've lost something like 80% of our hay meadows in the last 100 years because over the years farmers have ploughed up these old meadows, they've used fertiliser, they've used selective weed killers so that we've lost a lot of these plants. So I'll show you some of them that you will find in a traditional hay meadow. Some plants typical of hay meadows, here's bird's foot trefoil and over here you've got red clover and over here Bit. This is plantain with the long narrow leaves and of course buttercups. This is common sorrel. It's a relative of rhubarb. Um, <clears throat> the leaves can be stewed like spinach and they've got a nice sort of sharp flavour and uh, quite popular in posh restaurants. I didn't know this was here, this is Big Nut, um, a member of the Umberlifery family, same family as cow parsley and so on. And notice the very finely divided leaves. If you dig down, you'll find a little nut underneath, and those are edible. Um, pigs obviously uh, like them, hence the name Pig Nut, but I remember as a kid we used to dig them up and eat them. They're quite a peppery taste, but um, there we are, big nut. A lot of rabbits about on the common, as evidenced by the droppings here. Don't see them very often because they tend to come out evenings and early mornings. But they're quite important because they keep the grass down where it's already been kept short by trampling. Um, they tend to do their droppings in one place, so you find little piles like this. Also. They're what's called coprophagus in that they actually eat their own droppings because um, the first time the grass goes through their system it doesn't extract all the um, good nutrients from it so they eat it a second time, get a second helping. Along here you'll find various plants and animals and birds which are more typical of hedgerows and roads, so we'll have a look at some of those on the way back. Here's a bumblebee feeding on the gorse flowers. This is a white-tailed bumblebee for obvious reasons. So the gorse, as well as being a habitat for birds, is also an important food source for all sorts of insects. This is a bumblebee feeding on knapweed. Not sure what species it is, I will have to look it up, but it shows the importance of plants like knapweed as a nectar source for bees and other insects. A little bird sitting on top of a bush is a white throat. If I could get closer you could see the white throat, but the song is very characteristic. they will fly up from their perch in a, a courtship flight, sort of going up vertically and then coming down again to the same spot. But he's not going to do it. This is Beak Talksbeard, uh, another member of the dandelion family. There's a whole range of 
plants called hawk bit, hawk weed, hawk's beard. The hawk bit bit comes from it was thought that they um, eating the plants made the eyesight of hawks better. A beautiful spear thistle or scotch thistle just coming into flower. Field bindweed growing alongside the road, hated by gardeners, but um, I think it's got beautiful flowers. Common mallow grows everywhere around Porthcawl, along roadsides and so on. Here it is next to the path leading towards Rest Bay alongside the common. <laughs>